Remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. Every year in the UK, Bonfire Night is celebrated and commemorated, and it's a time in which fireworks are set off and excitement is had. However, the history behind this commemoration is rather sinister. Guy Fawkes is known most commonly for being the most famous conspirator who worked to blow up the Houses of Parliament and subsequently blow up the King, Queen, church leaders, many nobles and bring down the monarchy and the government. He was discovered literally sitting next to 36 kegs of gunpowder which had been placed in a room below the Houses of Lords in the cellars of the Palace of Westminster. He was literally caught red-handed and allegedly even with a box of matches in his pocket. However, after his capture, the story of Guy Fawkes takes a much darker, sadistic and brutal turn. Join us today as we look at the torture and execution of Guy Fawkes, and remember, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. There are a couple of accounts about when the searches that discovered the gunpowder and Fawkes took place, but an anonymous letter was what tipped off the authorities about the plot, and it was on the morning of the 5th of November 1605 in which Fawkes was caught red-handed. He had been put in charge of guarding the gunpowder that was being stockpiled and was subsequently arrested. He was dressed in riding gear as if he was just about to run off and hide away. He was discovered along with 36 barrels of gunpowder which would have unleashed huge damage. Upon being discovered, he gave his name as John Johnson and was first interviewed and scrutinised by the members of the King's Privy Chamber. During these initial inquiries, he remained defiant and would refuse to communicate with the interviewers and would also be extremely difficult towards his interrogators. Following Tudor monarch Elizabeth I's religious settlement, Catholics were made to worship in secret and the whole gunpowder plot's motives are ingrained in religion. James I had initially refused following his crowning as King of England to grant Catholics more religious tolerance and freedom. The hope in the gunpowder plot was that following the murder of the King and much of the government, then Parliament would provide English Catholics with a chance to take over the country, deposing the Protestant-led monarchy. When Fawkes was taken to the King and asked about what he was doing in the cellars, he boldly replied, I wish to blow up the Scottish King and all of his Scottish lords back to Scotland. He also expressed his regret at having failed, yet James I admired his Roman resolution and honesty to say this to the King's face. Fawkes would remain relatively quiet throughout the 6th of November 1605, and records show that he would continue to deny, implicating his friends and co-conspirators in the attempted plot, and he refused to give any names. In a letter on the 6th of November, James I wrote, The gentle tortures are to be first used unto him, and thus by steps extended to greater ones, and so God speed your good work. James, before more details emerged, had issued torture to be used upon Guy Fawkes in order to gain more information from him and to gain them crucial names of the co-conspirators. For this, Fawkes was transferred over to the Tower of London and the King himself would even compile a list of questions to ask this so-called man named Johnson, who Fawkes still maintained was his name. On the 7th, a few more details did emerge about the plot during interrogation. It was discovered that the plan had begun 18 months before and was confined to five people at first and then it grew and grew and all these members swore their secrecy. It also came out that they planned on putting Princess Elizabeth on the throne, James's daughter, and that she would marry an English Catholic. Sir William Wadd was the Lieutenant of the Tower of London and he led much of the interrogation of Fawkes in the Great Hall of the Queen's House that overlooks Tower Green, the site in which the execution of three Tudor Queens took place. It was important at this time that a confession was obtained from Fawkes, so torture was applied inside the tower's walls. The Tudor period had really made the tower have a notorious reputation due to the torture and execution or beheadings that happened inside the tower's walls. Torture was used as a way to break a prisoner's resolve, and sometimes even the threat would be enough. Some were tortured so harshly that they would even die from their injuries sustained. Initially, lighter torture methods were used upon Fawkes, such as using devices such as the manacles. These were chains that hung from the walls, in which a prisoner's hands would be hung from the wall for a long period of time. Within a number of minutes, the pain would have been excruciating from this, but the damage wasn't as severe as other methods. Whilst imprisoned, Fawkes would tell William Wadd that every night he had prayed that by planning to blow up the king, he was saving his own soul and helping to advance the Catholic faith. He was told that he would be interrogated until the Lieutenant of the Tower had gotten the inward secrets of his thoughts and all of his accomplices. 
From this, it's almost certain that Fawkes suffered on the rack. Usually, the threat of the rack was enough for people to confess all of their crimes and secrets, but Fawkes would undergo a horrific experience on the rack which would break him. Fawkes would be laid out on the device, with a rope tied to his arms and legs. The rack would then stretch out his limbs, ripping his arms and legs from their sockets, the sinews in his muscles ripping with every brutal turn. His bones could have even snapped during this process, and other tortures could have been applied, such as burning with torches and candles, and fingernails or toenails being torn out. The rack was enough though. After managing to take a couple of days of extreme torture, Guy Fawkes would name his co-conspirators. Fawkes was left completely broken following his torture, and he was so injured and afflicted by his ordeal, that his signature was barely evident when he signed his confession. His signature points to the fact that he suffered greatly at the hands of his interrogators. The trial of Guy Fawkes and a number of his co-conspirators would not go well, with the defendants all being found guilty. Due to being found guilty of high treason, they would be sentenced to a horrific death. The condemned were to be drawn backwards to their death by a horse, their heads near to the ground. Their genitals were then to be cut off and burned before their eyes, and their bowels and hearts removed. They would then be decapitated, and the dismembered parts of their bodies displayed, so that they might be food for the crows and ravens. On the 31st of January 1606, Fawkes and the three others were dragged from the Tower of London on hurdles to the Old Palace Yard at Westminster, and were forced to see the building they had attempted to destroy. His fellow plotters were then hanged and quartered. Fawkes must have been a completely broken and severely injured man following the drawing and also his torture, and he was the last one to stand on the scaffold, to be hung until almost dead. As his last moments were about to unfold, he began to climb the ladder, and he appealed for forgiveness of the king and state, and also promised to uphold his Catholic practices. Whilst climbing to the noose, the drama would unfold. Weakened by his torture, but still having his wits about him, Guy Fawkes jumped from the scaffold. His neck broke, and he fell to his death being killed instantly, and this spared him the horrific ordeal of his hanging and quartering. He was still quartered following this, with his lifeless body being cut into bits, and the body parts distributed to the four corners of the kingdom for public display as a deterrent. The legacy of the gunpowder plot is still celebrated today. It's a real what if. What if the conspirators had managed to blow up the king, queen, and majority of the government? The country today could be incredibly different because of these possible acts, should they have been carried out. Ultimately though, the downfall, torture and execution of Guy Fawkes really does show us that plotting to conspire against the monarchy was an incredibly dangerous thing, and one in which you could greatly suffer for. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.